without wrinkle. That's my the subject of my topic. Anyway, when God created man on the sixth day, they were made perfect. But when sin came, of course, you know what happened. I think I was wondering what to say about wrinkle. And I knew Sister Norman knew who to appoint. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> I was thinking about that. I said, wow. Don't ask me, but she knows every one of us from above. <laughs> okay, the Bible tells us that on the day when Yeshua comes to, for his bride, the church will be adorned with beauty, wearing splendid clothing that will be white and pure. Why? Because she has made herself ready for her beloved husband. Hey, I did that. Our key text is Ephesians 5.27, which you already have heard, that he might present it, the bride, to himself, a glorious church, not having wrinkle, but that it should be holy. The goal is no wrinkle. From the time I got this assignment, I did not know what to say. I said, so, but anyway, about two weeks ago, the radio was on, and they were talking about hormones. <laughs> so it, the, the commentator was saying that as you age, the gro growth hormone also diminishes. And that's when you're 30 years old, it starts, you will start having wrinkles. And then I would see magazines. In fact, my girlfriend gave me this magazine about women, beautiful women, and there was a say, there's sample inside. So I was thinking, maybe I will try that before I present it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll use it. So unfortunately, I lost it. So I had, <laughs> then I said, maybe I'll try aloe vera. <laughs> but anyway, no. I did not get a chance. It was just too busy in the shop. I could not do anything. I thought maybe I'll give up on this thing <laughs> because I just don't have the time to do this. And Sister Norma said, just read it. But anyway, OK. You, you know that I used to work in the operating room. And I don't know if I should tell you this, but uh, we, have, we have Botox. And so the women that has Botox have left over solution. So four of us nurses will we will split the thing and inject it, and the doctor will inject it to our faces too. <laughs> I thought, oh my, that was so funny. But anyway, we tried to do everything. My girlfriend years ago, maybe 20 years ago, she gave me this. This is to massage your face. I found it. I was not looking for it, and I found it. Oh, yeah. and then you do this and. So I bought bar battery, but it's been a long time, so it did not work. <laughs> I was going to let you try it. it really, but I did not do it. Maybe if I had done it every single year, I would not have all these mini wrinkles, you know? <laughs> really. So, uh, uh, too late. <laughs> okay. Did you realize that the groom it's the one that makes the uh, wife you know, or the girl perfect. And that he, Christ, Yeshua, our groom, might sanctify and cleanse it, the bride, with the washing of water by the word. OK, we'll keep going. That he, Yeshua, our groom, might present it the bride to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be. And how do we get these wrinkles, really? How do we start it? Uh, well, you heard about hormones. But actually, for me, 
I know that everybody knows that I don't drink a lot of water. <laughs> and then and they, they keep asking me, Norma, did you drink your water? And then my son the other day in the shop said, Mom, did you drink your water? And they say, I said, yes. But sometimes I just kind of, yes, but not really. <laughs> When Dr. Casey was here, all the things that I have to do to myself, and then down the bottom it says water, an exclamation about 10 of them like this, <laughs> drink water. <laughs> so I'm desperate. So I drank water today though, so don't ask me again. <laughs> oh, then. But anyway, um, I read a few of this, and you know, you know what you have done for the wrinkles in our lives. We spend too much time to please our husband. You know, we have not, you know, sometimes we are on the phone a lot or we, have, we are too busy and we are not able to please our husband. So that are, those are ones, those are some of the wrinkles we have with our husbands. <laughs> Maybe if we paid attention, more to our husband, we would have all the problems of <laughs> divorces and all this. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so, he says, woe to those who plan iniquity, to those who plot evil on the beds. At morning's light, they carry it out because it is in their power to do it. Iniquity left and check leads to a state of willful sin with no fear of Elohim. Wrinkle, wrinkles in our characters. Yeshua desires to present the church to himself without any flaw, whether it be the ravages of sin in our body or soul or moral or character defect within us that he might present to himself. A glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Those who corrupt their own bodies cannot enjoy the favor of Elohim until they certainly repent, make an entire reform and perfect holiness in the fear of Jehovah. None can be Christians and indulge in habits which debilitate the system and bring on a state of prostration of the vital force which end in making a complete wreck of beings formed in the image of Elohim. Elohim will accept nothing but purity and holiness, one spot, one wrinkle, one defect in the character will forever debar them from heaven with all its glories and treasures. Yeshua's church has never been approved or accepted by the world, and it never will be. If you live for Yeshua, you won't have to separate yourself from others' company. They'll do it for you. All you have to do is live for him. Suddenly, you'll find yourself reproached, rejected, called evil. Men shall hate you, and they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. That is Luke 6, 22. Most professed Christians have no sense of the spiritual strength they might obtain were they as ambitious, zealous, and persevering to gain a knowledge of divine things as they are to obtain the paltry, perishable things of this life. The masses professing to be Christians have been satisfied to their spiritual dwarfs. They have no disposition to make it their object to seek first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. Hence, godliness is a hidden mystery to them. They cannot understand it. They do not by experimental knowledge. The moral pollution will cert certainly bring its reward, 
the cost must bring the results. Those who profess to be disciples of Il Rashua should be elevated in all their thoughts and acts and should ever realize that they are fitting for immortality and that if saved, they must be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Their Christian character must be without a blemish or they will be pronounced until to be taken to a holy heaven to dwell with pure, sinless beings in all Elohim's everlasting kingdom. The first work for those who would reform is to purify the imagination. If the mind is led out in a vicious direction, it must be restrained to dwell only upon pure and elevated subjects. When tempted to yield to a corrupt imagination, then flee to the throne of grace and pray for strength from heaven. In the strength of Elohim, the imagination can be restricted to dwell upon things which are pure and heavenly. So what do we have to do with all the wrinkles we have? I know that God has many times been displaced, but I, for me, the solution is always go to the sanctuary. First thing in the morning, you go through the sanctuary and repent the sins that you have done for that day. And there's only one solution is to go to Yeshua and ask him to bless you for that day, confess everything to him, and also learning to get rid of the devil. He is going to help us in everything that we want if we are faithful in everything. And thank you so much. <laughs>